Hello, dear friends. I'd like to talk about Parshat Noach, the second parsha on the book of Genesis of Breshit. And I particularly want to talk about the two engineering projects of that parsha. One of them, of course, is the building of the ark, the building of the tefa by Noach. And the second one is the um, Migdal Bavel, which is the Tower of Bavel, two engineering projects of that parsha. And let me start with Noah. Noah is asked to build the ark. That's a strange thing. Let's say if God went over to Noah and said, build a car, how did, would Noah know how to build a car? Now, God says to Noah, build a big ship. How does he know how to build a ship? And how does God know that Noah knows how to build a big ship? So let me take you back in time a little bit. And um, we will go back to chapter 4 in Breshit. Now, I have to say one important point. The Midrash Rabbah, which is one of the early Midrashim, rabbinic homiletics, interpretations, says that Noah's wife was Naama, the daughter of Lamech. Now, we have to understand what, what that means. Noah is the descendant of the third son of Adam, Seth, or Shet in Hebrew. There is Cain, Abel, and Seth. Cain kills Abel, so it's not clear whether Abel had a family or not. At least it's not mentioned in the Bible, so maybe he did not. But Cain did, and so did Seth. And Noah is descended from the third son, Seth, who about him, it says in Genesis, in Breshit, by Yolid Bitsalmo, that Adam conceived him in his image, just like it says that Adam and Eve were in God's image. So Adam conceived Shet, the, specifically the third son in his image, and through that third son you have all the generations leading down from Adam to Noah. But Noah specifically wants to marry somebody from the house of Cain, and her name is Naama, according to the Midrash. Now I want to try and understand the house of Cain a little bit, who they are, what Noah found within that house. Let's look at, now we know that Cain had a problem. He could not deal with the fact that his brother's offering was accepted more than his. That Hevel's offering of a lamb, a sheep, was offered and his fruits of the ground, whatever it was, potatoes, was not offered. And it really bothered him. And he couldn't deal with his feelings of envy. So he had a, a dark side to him too. But what was the other side of Cain? So it says about Cain, and Adam knew his Eve, his wife, and they conceived the child, his name was Cain. I have, and they said, why is he called Cain or Cain? Ki kaniti ish et Hashem, I have created a human being together with God. So Cain is called Adam and Eve's ability to create another human being with the help of God. And then she had another child whose name was Abel, who was a keeper of sheep. I'm going to pass that story of Cain and Abel and just continue for a moment. Cain, after he's driven out and he becomes a wanderer, So Cain left the presence of God and he dwelt in the land of Nod. And he had a son whose name was Enoch, Hanoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after Hanoch. So Cain seems to be actually, just like it said, uh, he, he, Adam and Eve said, we created a human being uh, with God. Cain becomes a child of creativity. First he works the land and then he builds a city. And he names the city after his son, Hanoch. So he's really, he's a builder, he's a mover. And um, Hanoch has a son whose name is Irad, and Irad, Mechoyael, 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 Begat. A fellow whose name is Lemech. Lemech is a direct descendant of Cain. He has two wives, Ada and Sila. Ada bore her son whose name was Yaval. Who was this Yaval? The father of all those who dwell in tents and have cattle. So he's a herdsman. His brother was Yuval, the father of all those who handle the harp and the pipe. 
meaning he made musical instruments. All of them are very talented. And Sila, the other wife, had a son whose name was Tuval Cain, Tuval Cain, named after his great, great, great grandfather, the forger of every cutting instrument of brass and iron. He's a man who makes things out of brass and iron, could be pots, could even be weapons, weapons of war, weapons of protection, but he makes things out of brass and iron. And he has a sister whose name is Naama. And the Mitra says that this Naama was the wife of Noah. You see, Noah was fascinated with the creativity of the house of Cain. And he wanted to understand it better because he also wanted to be creative. And how do we know that Noah is creative? It says in the end of Genesis, exactly about Noah, right, right at the end of the parasha. Uh, Noah, by the way, also had a father whose name was Lemech, but a different Lemech. And Lemech was 82 years old when he begat Noah. This is Genesis chapter 5, verse 28. And why did he call him Noah? To say, Zeya Nechamenu, this one will comfort us. Mimasenu, from our deeds. Umitzvon Yadenu, and from the, our difficulties on the land that God has cursed. If you remember, God cursed the land during the time of Cain. And Noah will comfort us and overcome the curse. How did he overcome the curse? According to Rashi and based on the Midrash, Noah created the first plowshare. This creation of the first plowshare was a way to overcome the curse of the land. What was the curse of the land? You try to plant and thorns and thistles come out of the land. So it's hard to plant. So Noah creates the, tr the plowshare, and now you can plow the land and then plant. So human ingenuity in science and engineering can overcome the curse of the land. So when God cursed the land, it was a challenge, but it was not a challenge that could not be overcome. And human beings had to learn how to overcome this. And that's what Noah did. So Noah had a love for inventing for doing things, engineering, to, he was create, creative. His brother-in-law was somebody who worked with iron and brass. And uh, he loved these things. So when God appears to Noah in chapter 6, it says, Noah, build an ark. For Noah, this was a great challenge. Because <laughs> this is the things he loved doing. He loved building. He loved using his hands. That's why God says, Noah, I'm going to use your talents. You're going to build the ark. And you're going to save what's left of the human and animal population of the earth. Let's go back to the verses. In chapter 6, from verse 9, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was righteous and wholehearted, walked with God. Three children, Shem, Cham, and Yefet. God saw that the earth was corrupt. And he turns to Noah and says, the end of all flesh is before me because the world is full with violence and destruction, and I will destroy them. You have to make an ark of gopher wood with rooms, and you'll pitch it with pitch. This is exactly how you can make it, which is interesting. God tells them his exact measurements. The question is why we have to know that. So the length is 300 cubits. A cubit is about half a meter from here to here. That's called a cubit, or an L, E-L-L. -L. The breadth of it is 50 cubits, and the height is 30. Now, this is not, of course, a square. It is built in such a way which it's not even exactly a, a pyramid. It's uh, a boat, so it's a little bit hard to understand the volume. But if we play around a little bit with the numbers here, 300 cubits and 50 cubits would give us more or less the, um, the area of the inside of the arc, at least at the, at the bottom, meaning at its widest point. So 300 times 50 would be 15,000. So you have 15,000, and then you have a height of 30. Now, this height of 30, of course, is hard to uh, calculate in the sense of area, but let's just do 15 times 30, and we come out to 45,000. As I pointed in, out in Breshit, 
45 is the numerical value of Adam, which means man. Noah is there to save mankind. He is there to use his knowledge, his ingenuity, his knowledge of science that he learned to save mankind. In the literature of Luriana Kabbalah, 45 is also the name of God spelled with olives, which comes out to 45. That's Yud Vav Dalad, He Aleph, Vav Aleph, Vav He Aleph. And it's called the name of the redemption. So he has to redeem mankind through his ark. God wants Noah to know that Noah, your science, your understanding, your engineering is going to benefit mankind because human ingenuity can be used to benefit mankind. It's not bad. And that's what you're going to do. You're going to show everybody you'll build this ark, which he does. Now, in this, in this parsha, we also have another story. And the next story, of course, is the story of Tower of Babylon. And in the Migdal Bavel, Tower of Bavel, we have a different situation. And the different situation, of course, that's in chapter 11, if I remember correctly. I say it is. I'll open that for you right now. Hmm. The whole world was one language and one speech. And they journeyed east and they found a plain of the land of Shinar, which is Babylonia. They said, let's put bricks together and make bricks into stone and slime and make mortar. And let's build a city with a tower less us, and let us make a name for ourselves lest we be scattered abroad the face of the whole earth. We don't want people to scatter out. Keep them all together. Besides, we'll be able to control them if they're all together. Now let's have a tower which will give us name. Everybody know who we are. Makes us important. And its head will be in the heaven. The Mitra said they wanted to see if they could fight God. The Lord came down to see the tower. The men built. said they're now one people, one language, and nothing will withhold from them which they purpose to do. Now people don't understand what this means. When you have one people, one language, what people try to do is control. So let's confound their language that they shall not understand one another. And then he scattered them upon the, over the face of the earth. So here we have a situation where ingenuity and science is being used in order to control people. There are multiple interpretations of the Tower of Babylon but I'm using this description to show two positions, two ways that the Bible looks at human ingenuity and science. That Noah is told to use your ingenuity to save the world, to save what's left of the world. It'll be at least your family and two from all the animals, seven from, the, from what we call the pure animals, two from the unpure animals, if you look in the text. But you'll save mankind and you'll save animal kind and you'll start a new world. And the Tower of Babel, and the Tower of Babylon, humans are starting to use engineering, science, and ingenuity to control. So this is what man has to decide, how to use exactly human knowledge and ingenuity to, to do good and not to control and not to do evil. And uh, this is one of the messages of Parsha Noah. Next week we'll see with Abraham that what Noah didn't do, what Abraham did, was try to stand up for his generation. It is, of course, commendable to do, fulfill what God requests. Sometimes you also have to stand up for your generation, even sometimes before God, as Abraham did. Shalom, shalom.